Yo, Mitch. Hello, how are you? Good, man. One second. There we go. So, can hey, you hear me? Man. You can hear me, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. I kind of got a weird <laughs> setup going on here. Uh, weird meaning? I'm just holding my mic up with a glass cup here. I don't oh, know. interesting. Yeah. Well, do what works, right, my friend? Yeah, yep, yep. So how you been, man? I've been all right. How have you been? Busy. Yeah, same. Very busy. <laughs> Not yeah, really man. used to being so busy, for sure. Yeah, and so so tell me, what, what have you been kind of up to? It's been a while since we talked. Uh, I've been up to just... I've... I stopped streaming like five months ago or so, and I've just been like on a different journey completely. That's kind of what I've been wow. up to. Yeah. yeah. I, I saw you were streaming a lot of WoW, and it seemed like it was really going well. Yeah, no, I, I kind of with like Shadowlands came out, and my stream was actually had peaked at like the highest heights I'd ever hit, but I was still just like super unhappy, you know? So I kind of just was like... Why am I continuing to do this? It's like, yeah, I'm successful and like I have like on the outside it all looks good, right? But on the inside I was I was not good. So I just decided to try something else. Wow. That seems yep. hard to do. I mean, it was actually not that hard. I kind of just was like my heart just like knew it had to be done, you know? Like I I I just I just something inside of me just told me like there's got to be more to this life or something, you know, like, cause I, I mean, I've been streaming a long time and I feel like I've been in the environment of just gaming and playing games for, you know, 10 years or so. So I just wanted to like throw myself full fledged into something else and see what happens. Can you help me understand? You said that there were like things were going really well, but like you just knew on the inside that it was not right. Can you help yeah, me like, understand that? Like career wise, everything was going well, right? Like from the outside, like from perspective, but my internal happiness and whatever is like guiding me, I don't know, like my spirit, whatever you want to call it, like just, I just felt deeply sad inside. Like after most of my streams, I would just like kind of, I would like take these long showers where I would just let the water just slap me, just lay there and slap me. And I would just cry for hours. Like this was like, a ritual of mine while I was like streaming Shadowlands. So it's like I would go live and I'm like all good when I'm live, but then it's when I turn off the camera and it's just me alone, I'm not okay, you know? So I just realized like, why am I lying to myself, you know? Like no amount of money or success from Twitch or any of that egotistical stuff that I was chasing years ago is going to make me happy. And it, Shadowlands was like a realization for me to really figure that out. It was like, oh, this doesn't make me happy, you know? I thought if I had all the viewers and subs and all that i would be good but it, i was i was worse than when i wasn't you know so it's like yeah that's how i knew i just i needed to try something different it it, it was like it was time for me to try something different hmm. and w wow man that's that's big bro yeah i mean it's definitely been a journey for sure but i've been uh, i've been on a spiritual kind of like growth path for a couple of years now. I never really shared this with Twitch chat because I didn't think there was much relatability there. Um, I thought it was, you know, more so I just come on, play my game, get rank one. You know, everyone's like, you know, thinks I'm a good mage and it's all good. You know what I mean? But yeah, I've been on like a spiritual path for a while now and it's it just kind of all hit me at once where I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I just need to like follow my heart or something like that. I don't know if I could, it sounds cliche, but I don't know. Yeah, you know, there's a reason that cliches are cliches. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> right. And it's, I, 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 when, when I hear something like follow your heart, it's the kind of thing that like a lot of people say, but I think very few people truly understand. And like when you understand it, it feels like it makes so much sense. Yeah, for sure. It does make so much sense. I mean, just, you know, just six months ago, I don't know. It's like everyone thought I was happy, you know, like literally my friends, they were all like, everyone thought I was happy. I was, I had like, I don't know, like a lot of viewers playing WoW Shadowlands and uh, I don't know, from the outside, I guess people just think that's happiness, right? Like just like like uh, financial or like career success is like, sure. it's just like, I don't know. I just, I really am struggling in this world to find deeper meaning than that, you know? Cause like, yeah, I'm just, I really do want to find something deeper and like a way to express my, like the real parts of me that that I haven't been able to express through streaming just because I feel like with streaming, it's it's not as like, 
as a, as a, an emotional of a connection with the viewer that I would like, I guess, so that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, well, like, I, I, go ahead, sorry. No, no, keep going, man. No, I was just saying, it's hard for me to con relate to, like, to the viewers that I had, like, playing WoW and all that. It just didn't feel like I was making that, like, real emotional connection. And whenever I would try and, like, open myself up, it's like people didn't seem to really care. It was just pushback, like, you know, like, dude, shut up, just play WoW, whatever, you know? So it's like, I don't know, I just want people to, like, to... Uh, that's, that's why I started music, because, like, it was just me alone with, like, a microphone, and I could just, like, express my my soul in a way. And, like, I, I just want people to be able to listen to that that version of me rather than, like, the version of me that just had to, you know, be this, like, sort of character to on stream. If mm. I don't know. Yeah. So I'm, I'm hearing that you were sort of living a fake life on screen. Uh, yeah, well... I was just trying to portray a happy version of myself when I wasn't actually happy. So if that's fake, then I guess, yeah. But I was trying to portray a put-together, happy, normal, functioning human when that was far from the reality that I was actually living. What was the reality you were living? Honestly, just hell. Like, I, I really feel like streaming has done a number on my mental health over, over the years. And I don't say that with, like... Obviously, streaming has done a lot of good things for me, you know? So it's, it's not like it's all bad. I'm just saying... There's there's a lot of things with it that that sort of did a number on me uh, over the years, and I uh, I wish I had like sort of taken this leap of faith sooner in my life to be honest with you because I've been very much so a lot more myself and able to express myself and just be happier in general since I stopped streaming. Uh, but a, a, a lot of the reason that I kind of was took this leap of faith was just. Like, obviously, you know, the Wreckful passed away. And that was a, like, giant moment for me to be like, wow, like, this shit is never the same for me again. Like, for real, that was like a moment where I realized it would never be the same again. And uh, I don't know. I think a lot of other broadcasters talked about how Wreckful touched them or whatever. But, like, I, I just, I had, like, a super deep friendship with Byron for many years. Like, we go back to, like, 2012 playing you know, Cataclysm WoW together before Twitch was even really a thing and before anyone made, like, any money doing it. So it was, like, to me, that event just, like, hit me like a brick, and it still does, and, and I, I sound like, uh, yeah, it's, like, I don't know. It still really haunts me, though, that he's gone. Can you help me understand what changed for you when Byron passed away? I just realized that I don't have as much time as I thought. You know, I really realized that it, it, it's not like like I was always living in the past, hoping that the past would happen again. And then once he passed away, I realized the past will never happen again. And I need to stop chasing on to something that doesn't exist anymore. Damn, dude, that's deep. Yeah, that's we said. That's kind of how I feel about it. So, yeah. I, I'm very thankful, though, for all the Twitch stuff, you know what I mean? Like, I had a great career, it was dope, and I'm hoping that... I'm really hoping that I can express myself in a different manner and people will be uh, okay with the the deeper parts of me, you know? Not, like, the shallow fart jokes on Twitch, but, like, the deeper parts of me. I hope people would, like, want to see what's up with that, too. Yeah, man. Well, so, help me understand a little bit. What is it... What is it that makes you, how can I say this? So it seems like some people are really happy with a slice of Mitch, right? Not the whole pie, but are good with the slice. Yeah, and, yeah not for sure. Go ahead, sorry. And, and, and so I'm just kind of wondering a little bit about like, you know, why does everyone... Or not maybe not everyone, but but you know, what are you like? Would it be okay if people weren't happy with the rest of the pie? You know what? what yeah, you know, for I, sure. Because I, I I, I'm getting. I, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just like, I'm I'm getting a sense that you want to share more and you want to connect more. And yeah, I'm a little bit confused because it seems to me like something about our language is kind of falling apart. Where I'm getting a sense of words that sound like you're looking for approval but the feeling that i'm getting from you is not really about approval at all and i just want to try to understand that you know that boundary between like giving people what they want and wanting them to give them more and like wanting to give them something authentic and wanting them to accept it 
Yeah, that's kind of the way. Yeah, that's that's probably how I would say is like I just want to be my authentic self and make art rather than just like, you know, I do something deeply meaningful for like me, I guess, you know, like I want to I want to do something deeply meaningful for me. And I I have like a weird story. I mean, um, and I feel like a lot of people might be able to relate to that weird story. You I'd know? love to hear it. Yeah, for sure. I have a I have a crazy story. Like with with all all of it. I mean, I don't. It, we don't probably have enough time to go into everything. But yeah, I, I have a really really uniquely odd story. And you know, I might just be some dumb kid from Baltimore or whatever. Like I've never really struggled financially because I've had like you know the Twitch success from an early age and stuff. But I think that actually may be a part of why I fundamentally have grown up awkwardly. If that makes sense. Like I think um, I didn't really understand at like a young age what i really had and it's like it just sort of took control what is what did you have at a young age i was just fortunate enough to not grow up financially struggling like i grew up you know going to private school all of that and then i i got big and started making money on twitch when i was like 20 21 you know so it's like i didn't really have the traditional like grow up and it's like i feel like as i got more successful i became more lonely um it, it's like a weird like double-edged sword type thing um yeah so i've had like the f material things that humans like search saw like search after right but i never really had like deep love or anything that i really felt like i could connect to like on that level and truthfully like i'm a very emotional spiritual like person and i I've never really shared that. I always kind of dumbed myself down and made myself out to be this just like clown stir wow player, right? Yeah. And uh, for me, I feel like that was, I did myself a huge disjustice and, and just disjustice in that way. I, uh, I, I, I regret doing that a bit, but it's like at the same time, that's what made me successful. So it's like, it, it's just, you know, fighting the double edged sword that is, I, I'm sure there's a lot of parallels like this with any career path, right? Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I <laughs> it's it's interesting. I I find that the double-edged sword isn't so much with the career path, but is more with us. Um, cuz oh, I for I, sure. I, yeah. And but at the same time, I'm I'm I kind of hear you loud and clear cuz I think that it's it's you know, you can easily make an argument that there's a cost to being a successful personality on the internet. Yeah, and there's, like, I just wish I had guidance in any way. Like, I didn't really have much family guidance going into this. Like, my father was always pretty much, like, uh, just obsessed with his work and his his business and all that. And, like, he, and I told you, you know about the situation with my mother. She's, you know, she's not really able to be there for me because she's extremely ill. And then mm -hmm. uh, I have a brother with autism who's currently in some mental hospital, probably, like, I, I don't know. Like, the last time I spoke to him was, like, a year or two ago, and... I don't, there's just a lot of things that weigh heavy on my conscience, and um, yeah. So like from the outside, I had all this fucking success and all this shit, but it's like it, I, I just it didn't do anything for the pain inside, man. Like I, I really feel like I had a, I had a really good thing with like a couple friends that I met, like Rekful being one of them, and it's like I don't know, I feel alone in the world, but it's all good because. Um, I don't know. I'm just, I'm going to find a way to like shed this pain, you know, one way or another. When you say it's all good, help me understand. It doesn't seem all good. No, it's not. I'm not all good right now, but I know in the future, uh, I've like, I've done a lot of work on like self reflection and like, you know, just pretty much yeah. just like emotionally, like become more intelligent. And not only that, with like body, mind, spirit, chakras, whatever you want to say. Yeah. So eventually I will do the work that is necessary to be a human again. But right now I'm sort of doing, uh, I'm just kind of seeing, I'm, I'm on like a path right now that I have to see through, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you, you gotta, you gotta get to the end of your journey and this yeah. is maybe the tough part. Yeah. It's kind of the, the dark valley that you have to get through to kind of come out the other side. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, I, can I just think for a second, Mitch? Absolutely, man. No big deal. I feel like I'm playing a lot of catch up because I, I, I think um, it's it's clear to me that you've been walking a very serious journey for some time now. 
And yeah. uh, I'm just trying to recalibrate from the person that I first spoke to. Because you seem like you've changed a lot in a good way. Oh, I've definitely changed. You know when you sort of just have to look at yourself in the mirror and just be honest? Like, that moment happened to me, and let me tell you, the person I was looking at fucking hated... I hated the person I was looking at. That's why I was like... Who did you see in the mirror? I just saw this insecure, sad dude running away from everything that makes him hurt and just hiding behind this mask of, like, streaming success or whatever you want to call it. Just, like, sort of... Maybe I wasn't, like hiding full on hiding but i was definitely running away what like my anxiety my anxiety and all of the things that i have like held deep inside myself i just ran away from them you know it goes back to like me feeling like i don't really have many deep connections you know i i really don't have anyone to really call you know it's like if i if i'm like for, for example this talk i'm having with you I don't feel like I could have this talk with my own father. And he's like the only one in, in my family that is even like coherently enough to like hold a conversation with me. And that sucks. What, what, what gets in the way of you being able to have a conversation like this with your dad? He, he just isn't there emotionally for me. And he never really was. I think he's working on it now that he's getting older. But at the same time, I I think to my father, I'm just some sort of like prop to him. Like it's like I'm his only son that is like functional and has a career and is doing stuff. And to like he to him, I'm just sort of like like his only thing to carry his name or what whatever you want to call it. I, I truthfully I think if I had an older brother that was doing other things, my dad would never even talk to me. That's actually how I feel. Wow. Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of almost hearing that your value is sort of not based on you as a person, but sort of like the role you fill. Yeah. You're like, you're like the carrier of the legacy. Yeah, for sure. And there's some crazy things that I've gone through with, uh, I don't know how personal I can get, but there are some crazy things that I've gone through in, in terms of just like betrayal in, in that regard where I was just like put in charge of things that I really shouldn't have been at a young age, you know? I mean, you can share, uh, you understand Twitch terms of service better than I do. I'm happy to hear whatever you want to share, but also, you know, you don't, you don't have to talk about that stuff. I think there's plenty that we can talk about in terms of your spiritual journey, but. For sure. I just think, uh, if, yeah, it's, it's nothing like TOS or anything like that. It's more of just like morally incorrect things that have, sort of happened i guess but yeah like we don't have to dive deep into some deep crazy stuff if you don't if you it's up to you well let me kind of lay out how i think about that mitch and then you tell me whether we should dive in so what i'm okay. hearing what i'm hearing at the core of it is that there's mitch jones and then there's mitch right there's like the streamer personality there's the i still remember the first time we talked I still remember you kind of said, but it's all good. I'm Mitch Jones. Uh -huh. and, yeah, and, I remember yeah. that. And and so I think it must have been like over a year ago. But like that, man, just the way you said that really encapsulated that there's like this persona on the outside. And then there's like the person inside, like moving the levers. Yeah, and for on, sure. And on the outside, it, it's like a big smile and lots of fun. And inside, there's a dude who's like exhausted and sweaty and like can't get a breath of fresh air yeah for sure uh i think the mitch jones thing you're talking about is is gone now like i, I even when i yeah even when i streamed shadowlands i was not really putting on an act it was more of just like being myself playing wow and trying to put out the best version of myself but truthfully mitch jones the streamer whatever person persona whatever you want to call it i think that person died when wreckful all, when when Rackville died, like truthfully, like I I just I couldn't do it anymore, and um, yeah, yeah. Do so you remember earlier when I was like, I need a second to process because you seem like a different person. Yeah, for sure. And I need to catch up. I think what yeah, I'm yeah. grappling with is that I don't I don't detect a whole lot of Mitch Jones. So I was like, wait, this is weird. Yeah, Where's no, Mitch I've really I've really dug into myself, and that's why I start. That's why I changed. You know 
from Twitch streaming to like music because I just want to be me and give that, you know, whether it's painful or not, like I need to give whatever it is that my soul is like, it's just, I need to just be open heart. I don't want to be a closed heart anymore walking around, you know? So I, I think that's sounds like it's, I'd love to talk about that. When it co comes back to your dad, I want to just share a couple of thoughts. Sure. So what I'm really getting the sense of is that what you want more than anything else is to be connected. And that there was sort of like a farce that you could put on because at the end of the day, there were like a couple of like people like Byron who you did feel connected to. And so that was kind of enough. But really losing him has, has helped you realize like you really need to be seen. You need to be heard. You need to be, I don't even want to say accepted, but you need to be treated with authenticity. And even yeah. if that's acceptance, that's fine. And even if that's rejection, if people say like your music sucks, oddly enough, I think you may be okay with that as long as they're straight with you, that they see you for who you are and yes. they say, this yes. is not for me or this is for me. You're actually yeah. okay either way. Yeah, I'm good. I, I, I'm like I said, I, I know who I am and what yeah. I need to do. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm more so just trying to show a deeper side of myself. And I am okay with acceptance or not acceptance. Either way, it's like, you know, I'm not looking for validation externally. I'm more so have done the work internally to be able to share what I have to say, I guess, rather than just giving this uh, I don't know. I think streaming in general has just changed a lot. And uh, I think the game now is more just like, it's just a big PR fest of shit. And it doesn't really feel as genuine as when I was a part of it back like five, six years ago. And I'm just not really down for the game anymore, if that makes sense. Sure. You're, you got too much actual living to do. To be pretending to live yeah i mean i've been in the back end of streaming and like the forefront of streaming for a long time like i've seen it all so i know <laughs> i just know and i know it doesn't do anything for like for like a deeper meaning it doesn't do shit like you know sure so, yeah so uh kind of the, the reason i mentioned this is because if we think a little bit about you know the stuff potentially like the weird stories of uh, you know whatever betrayal or whatever uh, yeah. If what you're looking for is connection, right? Because that's really what I'm hearing is that. Yeah, you don't, exactly. You're exactly. It's so, exactly what I'm looking for. I just want people to f feel me for me because I gave people this thing that wasn't me. And I just like I feel like I want people to really feel like the actual me, you know, and yep. it's not like an acceptance thing. I just need them to know before I go that that's like that that person is and was there because people seem to have this like preconceived notion of me uh, from years ago, how I was like a jackass and all that, but that, that was part of the job for me. And, you know, and I feel like I was creating a show whereas like now I just want to be, uh, I just want to be seen for who I am, not for like something that was built as like a career, if that makes sense. Okay. Sounds wonderful. And also, I'm a tiny, tiny, tiny bit alarmed. Because you said, before I go. I'm curious, what do you mean by that? Uh, I, I more so mean, like, before I just drop off the social media grid. Okay. Yeah, like, I, I have a long-term plan of just ending up not in the public at all, you know? Uh, it's kind of just like, like I said, it's hard to really be an actual like human when you have to look at all of these different opinions of you every single day and yeah you can just not look at it but like you know that shit's like like how do you create art without connecting with your you know the people that are following that you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah so uh, what i'm kind of hearing is that you're on a journey to find who you are you want to yep. share that with other people they can accept or reject it but that being engaged with them in a social media PR fest will actually negatively impact your journey because then it'll be about giving people what they want and you need to pull away from all that so that you can continue to create. Yeah, for sure. I think being truly creative, and especially in an artistic way, like whether you make art or whether you're a musician or whatever you do, I think it's very important to be 
in at peace with yourself and really be able to express yourself, right? Like if you're living this like reality where you're just juggling like five different, different, like, you know, uh, the social media sphere where it's like a ladder climbing reality. Like if you're living that, then I don't think you can create like true art in my, in my opinion. And like, I'm just trying to really paint a beautiful picture of some pain that I've gone through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I think, uh, you know, what we create is content. Yeah, content. There you go. <laughs> so fucking soulless. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know, it's interesting because even even here at Healthy Gamer, what we create is content. And Yeah, true. I mean, it's all content, right? Yeah, so I, I think it's interesting because I think internally we, we also have a, you know, kind of a process of like, you know, what do, what do we want to do here? Do we want to grow or do we want to help people? And sometimes those are at odds with each other. For sure. And I do think sometimes people get caught up in a good thing that's bad for them. Which what is, I think, what that? I think sometimes there's good things that are not the, but it's not the correct thing for people. But because it's good, they stay doing it and they're not un unhappy, right? Like, it's like someone that has, you know, a crazy position at like some job that they work for and they're making, you know, a lot of money or whatever, but they're just like, they're not really fulfilling themselves in a way that like their deeper self wants to like express itself. Yeah. So how would you know? Well, I knew when I just looked in the mirror and I wanted to beat the shit out of that person in the mirror. That's what I knew. I knew. <laughs> I, I, I just knew. Like, you know, it just hit me like, but it, but I only was able to get to that point because I was doing like off stream. I was doing work on myself to like, because I was just extremely depressed. I was, you know, and I was like, how do I fix this? Like, I've always been a problem solver kind of guy. So I was like, how do I fix this? And the only way I was able to really like, I'm, it's not like I fixed it, but the only way I was able to like get pieces of uh the pain to like sort of shed off of me i didn't have to wear it as much was just through like the things that you taught me like meditation uh really diving deep into uh just yoga uh definitely food that you eat all of that shit like cleansing my body sort of like enabled my mind to like shed that pain and it was a painful experience and for a while i was absolutely crazy but i came out the other end knowing a lot more about myself even if it was a painful journey to go through can you tell me about that journey Sure. I mean, I, I was nuts for a while. Like I was on like, I tried all these diets. I tried like keto. I tried intermittent fasting. I even fasted for 10 days straight where I didn't eat anything. I just drank water for 10 days. I did all of these things just like, cause you know, I was just researching like on the web. I've, that's where I've learned everything is just like on the internet. So you kind of have to decipher like what is valuable information, and what isn't and not like be an idiot about it. But uh, yeah, I was just like sort of like teaching myself more about the human body and the human mind, how it works, all that. So I think I, I don't know. I think I definitely learned a lot, but it was a painful experience for sure. And so Mitch, I'm, you, you kind of, you'll use these words that have a lot of volume, but I'm not quite sure what I'm hearing. You'll say I was crazy for a while. So I'm getting that. Oh, well, you were on the outside, volume. I was crazy. Yeah. What does like that from mean? Some, well, a lot of people... I feel like would view me as like crazy or something if I'm just like doing all this, like it looks manic, like sort of, right? But to me, it was like something I had to go through. Does that make sense? Yeah, sort of. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't, I, I'm I, like, I can understand your conclusion, but I'm having a lot of trouble understanding, like, you know, when you were doing, let's say, keto or intermittent fasting, what were you experiencing? What were you looking for? What, you know, I, I was get that you've come out the other cleansing. side, but. Cleanse. Yeah, I was and looking so what, to just cleanse spiritually, mentally, physically, all of it. How did you know you needed to cleanse? Because I was miserable. I was. I had the most anxiety out of any human I'd ever met. I would wake up every day and constantly check my heartbeat just to see if it was beating. And if it was beating too fast, I would assume that I'm having like a heart attack or something. Like it was like I was literally crazy with anxiety. And the only thing that gave me a little bit of peace from that was cleansing my body. Uh, like truthfully, like uh, if I had kept eating the same way and keeping the same stress levels that I had from streaming and I stressed myself out with streaming because it was always like this like numbers game. Right. And like if I if my shit wasn't doing well, like I had to pretty much just destroy the part of my ego that gave a fuck about streaming because that part of me was destroying me, whether it was like making me successful or not. That part of me was absolutely destroying me. And I literally had to just kill that part of me 
because living every day just like like if i had a bad stream the rest of the day i would feel like i was a failure i was a loser i was a fuck up whatever you know and i just had to destroy that part of me because i literally could not keep living like that how how do you destroy that part of you just taking a lot of time off of streaming and healing and not looking at social media going for walks in the woods becoming a fucking human again you know like that's what helped me a lot actually was just not being plugged in and just being completely unplugged sort of living a boring life for a while but that boring life sort of gave me uh i, I guess you could call it a dopamine fast for a long time you know yeah hmm. interesting um <laughs> it's funny a couple weeks ago speaking of content i i did a i did a a quick debunk of the dopamine fast and and talked a little bit about it but um you know, it's interesting, Mitch, because I hear you say you had to kill that part of you. But what I'm sort of hearing is that you sort of let it wither out and die. As yeah, opposed yeah. To, yeah, I would I, say it withered out. Yeah, I didn't just like slay it with a sword. No, nah, it sort <laughs> of, it died a slow, painful death. Yeah, for sure. But it, it, eventually, like I said, I came out the other side happier. Like even today, like I'm still sad. Like obviously in this conversation, it's a little bit more sad because I'm digging deep into the things that I still haven't really come to full fruition and like dealt with right um there's still a lot of things that hide inside of me and i have to deal with those but yeah yeah i, I mean i think that it's important to remember that the goal of spirituality is not to not feel sad anymore because sadness is a part of life it's yeah. to sort of feel peace or tranquility in the face of sadness yeah for or in sure. the face of excitement yeah um, and, and I do get the sense, Mitch, that you're more at peace now than I've ever seen you. I am more at peace now, and I have music to thank for that, truthfully. I think that putting all of my energy into a different outlet that isn't just, like, built with that immediate feedback that Twitch had, like, it just makes me slow down and able to live a better lifestyle, if that makes sense. Yeah, can you tell me a little bit about how music has helped you? Absolutely. Uh, well, when I first started music, I was just kind of dicking around or messing around with, uh, you know, some viewers of mine or whatever. And then after like a couple songs, I was like, you know, I kind of want to try and make like a, a heartfelt song, right? And then I was like thinking to myself, like, what bothers me the most right now? And what bothered me the most, what still bothers me the most is the fact that Rifle is no longer here. And I decided to just put all of that pain into into a song. And uh, in the first verse, th there's like a memory I have with Wreckful that uh, this one haunts me like crazy is um, a week before he died. I was at uh, his like condo downtown with like his his roommate Merck. I was hanging out with his roommate Merck and it was like 3 a.m. or something. Um, but Merck was like, yeah, like you can just pass out down down. They had like two condos, right? So he's like, you could just pass out at the condo uh, below no one's there. He told me no one was there. And I go down there and I walk into the kitchen and I just look over and I just see Byron like on the balcony, just kind of like looking off into the sky, you know? And he was just like, you know, just pondering, like thinking, whatever. And I, in that moment, I was like, I should go, you know, say something or talk to him. And I was like too scared to, I was like, oh, he might not want to see me or like, you know, maybe he doesn't want to talk right now. Maybe he's just, you know, having a moment to himself, whatever. So I just, I thought, you know, I really just, turned around and went back upstairs and then a week later he's gone so like in the first verse of that song it's like i kind of talk about that 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 story and um i don't really go into the same detail that i just told you but it's like i kind of put everything i had into that song when it came to the pain that i was dealing with from that situation and i still live in regret every day not not being able to say anything to him that day what do you regret about not being able to speak to him that day my fear and anxiety stopped me from from saying something to him, and I'll, I'll never get a chance to say anything again. I literally saw him a week before he died, and I said nothing. It haunts me, like, really badly. When you say haunts you, how does that affect you? Nightmares, um... Just, I don't know. It's like this, like, I, like whenever I really deeply think about it, I just get this overwhelming sense of, like, grief, I guess. It's like, uh, it's like, uh, like I messed up or something, you know? I, 
I'm going to think for a second, okay, Mitch? Yeah, you're fine. What does your mind tell you would have happened if you did not let your fear and anxiety control you in that moment? I think I could have... I think I could have had a conversation. I think I could have helped Byron because at this time I was on some spiritual journey and whether I'm an idiot or not, I'd like to believe that I've learned some things and that I could have maybe, you know, just showed him that it, it, there's, there's other ways to find happiness, you know? Like, uh, I think he was already on a spiritual journey of his own, but I, I think that, I, I don't know, like if I had just spoken to him, I, I think it would have, I think it could have sparked something that may have helped, you know? So I, I think it's fair to say that if you had said something, it could have sparked something that could have helped. Yeah. I think that's, that's a very yeah. accurate assessment. And at the same time, I, I don't know, Mitch, if you've gotten to this point in your journey, but like, you know, a big part of my understanding of the journey is that like things have to happen in a particular time and place that you can regret as much as you want to about the past. But at the end of the day, it's the past that makes you the person that you are today. Yeah. Um, and I, I know. Can... Yeah. yeah, I know. I'm just saying the person I am today, I still have a lot of work to do. I just, yeah, it's like I live every, like the red sickness that we talked about last year has gotten worse, but like I've found ways of uh, coping, you know, internally. But truthfully, like, yeah, I feel alone as fuck, man. Like, I do. And uh, I'm trying my best to to cope with, like, you know. And, and it's like, on the internet, I almost wasn't allowed to be sad, you know. It's like, oh, you're fucking making this much money or whatever. Like, you're successful. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, that's kind of what I was, like, just, like, this boot up my ass. Like, you know, I'm not allowed. To, it was, like, it just felt like a very, I just couldn't be in that environment, you know. So I had to just stop. Yeah, I had to just stop. So, you know, uh, Mitch, I'm a little bit curious, you know, what, I mean, I could send data your way. I don't think that would really help. Um, I've read a lot of data. <laughs> I, I know you, <laughs> like I said, I, I don't think it would help. Um, you know, it's hard. So, you know, I, I deal with suicide a lot as a psychiatrist. I think it's really challenging for people to, you know, I think just about every person that I've talked to who's a survivor after someone they love or care about commit suicide has thoughts or experiences like yours, right? Like they, their mind finds one moment in particular and it'll sort of like think about, it'll usually involve personal weakness, yeah, right? Like where you'll say like, if I had been stronger than dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And, but and, the thing is, the person I am now, I feel like I would have made a different uh, decision. Yeah. And so this is where if you want to get like, you know, off the deep end of spirituality, like what we have to understand is that the person that you are now was born out of that tragedy, was born out of that moment. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think it awoke me in a way, but it's like, I don't know if I was ready to be awoken that way, but it happened regardless of what, if I was ready or not. And yeah, Bro. I think it took, it took me on a journey of, like I said, spiritual, like a spiritual journey to where I started caring less and less about my ego and more and more about inner peace. <laughs> Bro, the whole fucking internet was so so asleep that that's what it took to wake us up. Yeah. Right. When you say you weren't ready, you're right. You weren't ready. And yeah, I wasn't that's ready. why, that's why it was necessary. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause sometimes it takes a big ass wake up call. And so I think this is where like, this may sound kind of weird, but like, I'm going to lay a burden at your feet. Because if this is the price that was paid to wake you up, you better fucking be awake now. 
which I I'm, think you understand. I'm definitely awake, man, and I am just trying to change the whole thing. Like I'm trying to change yeah. everything that I used to do and do things in a in a correct way. Uh, yeah, and that's why I I do still struggle a little bit with like the internet and stuff because like you know sure. there's obviously some people that say some pretty fucked up shit to me, and it's like uh, I, I don't really want to get into it, but uh, yeah, I read some terrible things like because. Uh, I don't know, people just don't seem to do their research or know, like, how, like, I don't know. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. People people tend to make judgments very easily. And For that's, sure. And, and, you know, there's a correlation between not doing your research and making judgments, which is that the more research you do, I think the harder it is to make a judgment. Yeah. And so what we end up with is a bunch of people who make judgments without doing any research, because that's the only way you can do it. Yeah, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I've never been someone that does that too often, especially, yeah, I don't know. So yeah. to me, it's, it's hard for me to relate to that. Like, I, I would never comment on someone else's like shit without like knowing what the fuck happened. Yeah, I think that that's a healthy way to go through life, but it's hard to do that, right? It takes a lot of effort. It's a lot yeah, easier sure. to just judge. But For sure, for sure. And I, I, I don't think that should matter. Like, I think... You know, if I was as strong, if I was as strong as I want to be, and am capable of being, I don't think I would even pay any mind to that. But truthfully, it's like I was raised on the internet, and like it just like the the opinions of people on the internet, obviously, you know, they just it matters to me, right? Just because this is like to me, it's like <laughs> it's like been my whole life, you know. So it's uh it's hard to look at it from a different point of view. But that's what I'm working toward is looking at it from a different point of view. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like you said, we were all raised on the internet, so it's just yeah. how we how we function. I was absolutely raised on the internet for sure, which is like maybe a bad thing, but definitely was raised on the internet. Yeah, so this is also where I'd kind of think a little bit karmically for a second. I'd say it's I don't think it's a bad thing. It's it's what you needed, right? So if you think about your struggles and even I venture to say your contributions, what I want, what I'm seeing in you, I don't know if this is actually true or not. But what Go I'm ahead. seeing in you, Mitch, is like, you are not alone in your struggle. You are not alone in being a child of the internet. And actually, like, even more so today, children that are born, born today will be more a children of the child of the internet than you were, right? Because things are yeah. getting worse. I think like, you're right. I think they are getting worse. So if you think about it, you had a couple of years before, as you put it, Twitch became PR bullshit. But now yeah. everyone coming up on Twitch is existing in this current world. Yeah, right? which this current world, I feel like, is just filled with manipulation and what can you do for me? And all these people that are just running around with their heads cut off at trying to like build this false sense of ego and add things to their resume. And then they're going to wake up one day and be like, wow, I wasted my whole life chasing a dragon that didn't even make me happy. And I'm glad that I realized that at a young age because... If I didn't, I would still be that fucking idiot person, you know, sitting there and just doing this like shallow ass shit, trying to make myself feel like I'm cool. Yeah. So hopefully your music will help people get there. Yeah, for sure. You know, so I'd also be a little bit careful because I'm still detecting some amount of ego and judgment towards them. What do you think? Bitterness? Or who's them? I don't know. But you're talking Wait, about you're talking about people. Oh uh, yeah, no, I yeah. yeah, you're right for sure. No, I definitely have a little bit of like resentment and stuff towards like just like ignorance in the world. I really like, and when I say people, it's more so just like the manipulation that is like behind the scenes. It's not really like the viewers or any of that. It's more of just like the things that I've seen on the back end of just straight ass nine like. Some acting that deserves an Oscar winning award type shit. You know, I've just seen, I've seen everything, man. And uh, it's sad to see just the masses be fooled on a fucking scale that's like, I don't really feel like getting more deep into it. But uh, it's just, I've seen it all. Just trust me, I've seen it all. Yeah, I, I don't doubt that you've seen it all. I'm just a little bit confused and I want to be careful because I don't, you know, I don't want to push you into starting drama. And at the same oh, time... Oh, it has nothing I, to do with anyone, like, no drama, none of that shit. Okay. Like, this, this this honestly stems from, like, my father and other things like that. Like, obviously this happens on the, you know, it, it, it's it's just a lot of things. I just feel like I have trouble trusting people because of uh, the experiences I've gone through. Okay. 
Yeah. So now we're going to kind of take a, I'm going to take a slightly different approach, Mitch, just toss something out. You decide whether it's worth pursuing. So I feel like we were talking a little bit more spiritually. And the reason I had mentioned your father, I'm glad you brought him up again, is because if your challenge is to connect with other humans, okay, yeah. let's say that like, I feel alone. I think yep. if we want to try to understand that, there's absolutely a spiritual element that we've talked about. It's like, hey, I put on a mask. I become this person that I don't want to be. I hate what I see when I look in the mirror. Shedding that mask, letting that ego wither away, starting your creative process, putting something out there that is authentically you, giving people an opportunity to connect with that. We walk down that road. There's another element here, um, which we can talk more about that. I don't think that's done. But there's another element here, which is just very simply from like a psychological standpoint, from a social conditioning standpoint. If you're telling me that your problem is loneliness and you're telling me that you've been deeply betrayed, as long as that emotional energy of betrayal and that the conditioning, the adaptations that happened in your mind due to that betrayal exist, it's going to be hard to connect to other people, bro. Oh, yeah, for sure. But I, I feel like I've done a good job of forgiving those people. Like, that is, that's the first step to me was like forgiveness of the betrayal. But it doesn't it doesn't like fill the hole that still exists. You know, like I have forgived, forgave most, you know, uh, everything that's happened to me. And, and like, especially on the Internet shit, like I could give I, I could give a shit about that. But it's yeah, like there's people in chat saying train, for example. But me and train talk daily and are like our good friends. So like this is again like the ignorance does bother me a little bit cuz that guy who typed that didn't do his research and for me that's annoying but like I don't know it's just part of why I quit streaming you know I don't feel like babysitting all day so but uh, then what do you think why do you what's the hole if you've forgiven what's left what help me understand that uh what do you mean so you said like like you've you've learned how to authentically forgive which you know sure I'll, I'll if that's what you're saying, I, I, I think I trust you there. But I'm curious then, like, what's the hole that's left? You said that, the like, hole that's that left, doesn't repair it, the hole or doesn't fill the hole. Yeah, I, I think the hole that's left is just, like I said, I, I want to express myself in a true manner, you know? That's, like, the hole. And obviously, once I do that, I feel like maybe I'll be able to connect with people easier and not have as many walls put up or whatever whatever is like stopping me from experiencing like love or uh, something like similar to that you know just like deep connections i guess so mitch at this point i think i'm about to ask you to tell me more or i'm i am i do actually at this point want to know a little bit more about your dad but let me first explain my reasoning Sure. So what, I, what I'm hearing is that you feel a emptiness and lack of connection on the inside. And what, yeah. you've, what, you fi what you've hypothesized, so you started on this spiritual journey and you're going to create this music and you're going to share it with the world and you'll hopefully connect with people. Yeah. In my experience, that is going to be an important but insufficient step. For sure. And, and so I think that what I'm hearing is that you have walls up, but making music may be a part of that process. But there's a part of me that just the way you're describing things makes me feel like maybe there's something to be learned or gained from like understanding more of the details because you, you, you know all the details. And based on the details, mm -hmm. you've come up with a hypothesis. Yeah. If we think about, you know, what I try to do and what I try to help people with, it's, mm -hmm. it's not just to sort of fulfill the plan that they've created. It's actually to sort of figure out if the way that you've constructed your hypothesis is missing, missing something. And this is the yeah. first time during our conversation where I feel like maybe something is not adding up for me, like with all the spiritual stuff, oddly enough with the grief stuff, things like that, all that mm -hmm. stuff, like I'm with you a hundred percent. I think I like, I think it makes perfect sense. For some reason, I'm getting the sense that there's a blind spot, something about with what you're talking about now. Yeah, for sure. There definitely is a blind spot. I just think it's uh, <laughs> it's a lot to indulge into. But I mean, shit, I can tell you what, like what bothers me, and I don't know. I just it's hard to explain. I just feel as though I'm constricted of what I can say, just because I do really feel as though my father is all that I do have. And even though our relationship is shit, it's like maybe it one day wouldn't be. And if I just air out all of the 
shitty things that have happened that I'm just forever closing that portal, I guess. Okay. I'm so glad you shared that because let's think about this, okay? So, number one, our, our North Star, our primary compass is we do not want to have a conversation with you or do anything that will hurt you in any way, shape, or form, okay? So mm. if, if you feel like talking about this stuff and airing this shit out is going to negatively impact your relationship with your father, we don't want to do it. And well, I don't even think he would ever see this because he's never given a shit about so, what I've done on the internet. So, so but regardless, maybe, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, so then this is the thing, right? So like, I think this is what I'm kind of picking up on. Like, you're kind of thinking if you air this shit, it'll close the portal forever. I know it sounds kind of weird. It's the, this will close the door forever if I do this thing. Mm -hmm. That's not how life works. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, sometimes you can have catastrophic events like death, right? Where doors are sort of closed forever. But, uh, you know, that's the rarity. And what I'm wondering is it, it, if that fear of closing the door forever is part of what is actually the problem. Yeah, it, it probably is part of the problem. I actually do have a lot of fear about that. Like, I've wanted to speak about the things I've... The, have like really bothered me about that situation but i've sort of kept it to myself um and um yeah it's it's something that is difficult to think and speak about for sure yeah so now we have a choice okay so i'm going to toss out one statement this is going to be inflammatory it may evoke emotions but in the past mitch have you has your fear controlled what you want to say right so like here mm. we are again where we want to we want to give you time and space but like I'm going to point it out to you because if your fear of saying something like we actually don't want to hurt you right we don't want you to do anything that's going to like end up bad so yeah. we want to be sensitive to that we don't want to create drama we don't want to ruin your relationship with your dad but if he ain't going to watch it then like that fear is all in here yeah and it is internally yeah it is it is yeah it is internally i have a it's it's just so fucked up man like i don't i don't know so it's once like, again, if if you're not ready to talk about it, that's actually fine. I'm okay with that. But I think at the least what we should talk about is your fear about not – like you don't actually have to talk about it. The important mm -hmm. thing is not whether you share some story or not. The important thing is the fear that's controlling you. Yeah, for sure. So it's not I, – I guess it is fear. Yeah, I guess it is fear. It's more of a thing where it's like am I the piece of shit if I talk about it? You know, like it's it's like it could be that's the problem, right? It's like I just think of these in this like skewed way because it's like if I talk about things that bother me, then there's always going to be people that are assuming that I'm saying X for Y reason. You know, it's like I don't feel like I, I don't feel like if I make myself vulnerable that it won't be twisted in some way because most of the times I have made myself vulnerable, it has been twisted in some way and and. I don't feel safe in that way. Yeah. All right, Mitch. I need your help. Okay? Yeah. I need you to tell me if I'm bullying the shit out of you. No, nah, man. You're, you're fine. Wait for it. <laughs> okay? So here's the thing. Like, bro, that's exactly the problem. Like, here you are not being authentic about the person that you, like, what you feel on the inside because you're like... Oh, what if these people think I'm saying this shit for PR? Like, that's exactly what you've spent the last who knows how many months getting away from, is to True. connect to your authenticity and not give a fuck about how people are going to judge you, and you speak your truth. Yeah, you're right. It actually is fear holding me back from that. You're right. It's like, it's all about this, like, how, you know, and it's more, it's not just like PR, it's more of like, how would my... Like, it's like, how would my father twist that? Like, let's say my father heard this conversation and I said what bothered me. How would he twist that to me? That's more of what I'm talking about. You know, yes, it's like, I and why the fuck that started with your dad and now you're doing it with the rest of the Internet. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not wrong. I'm like, and, literally, I'm literally like fucked up from that. And I just put that on everyone else. It's like, I'm like, oh, yeah. But you're right. Yeah, you're right. I just assumed the internet would do the same thing. Then, like, yeah, you're right. 
exactly right. You're right because the in, because but you you learn how to recognize that pattern and be afraid of it. But it sounds like that started with your dad and like the internet was just you know not taking you seriously 2.0. Yeah. But I, I don't even know because I actually don't know. I mean, I could be talking completely out of my ass because I still don't know what happened with your dad. And that's yeah. sort of well, why I, want, like, I can give you a, I can give you a, a little bit of details. Like I'm just going to slowly ease into it rather than just, yeah. like, you know, what I'm saying well, yeah. that's what I mean about bullying you. I don't want you to like, you know, push you into speaking. No, like, if I unleashed all that, I would probably just, yeah, my mind would not be good. Like it's like okay. I have to I, I have to deal with this like one so, phase at a time type. Yeah. yeah. But a big thing, a couple a couple things that happened was I feel like I told you about the situation with my brother. Right. Where it's like I just feel as though um I guess I can just tell one story, but please just like hear me out because this is very personal shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. Well, there was one, I was like 23 or so. And uh, my brother had always, he grew up with uh, autism, like Asperger's. And, you know, he was always different, but um, he was a good, he was a good, smart dude. You know, he used to paint and he had some beautiful paintings, man. Like, uh, yeah, he was very talented dude. And uh, as he grew up, like my mother got really ill and my mother was kind of the main, main like caretaker for him and like held his hand through life and shit, you know. And um, I just remember one time when I was 20, my, my dad was like, my brother was falling apart. You know, he was he was not showing. He was messy, falling apart. my mother was not able to take care of him anymore. And uh, were you going to say something? Yeah, I, I think I'm lagging from a server standpoint. I'm wondering if this is the universe's way of like double checking that we want to say what we're about to say. I mean, I can stop. It's up to you, man. I think that this this feels important to me, but at the same time, like absolutely, like I don't want to pressure you into this. You know? Yeah, I don't really feel pressured. I just Okay. The, like I already told you, the things that I'm fearful of is more so just, um, yeah, just I think sometimes when you are honest and have an open heart, people like to sort of stab that invulnerability or that, sorry, that, that vulnerability. And yeah, that's the only thing I'm fearful of is that, I don't know. I just, okay. uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll. I'd like to help you feel supported enough to be able to be courageous and to help you be more vulnerable, despite the fact that you've learned probably the hard, I mean, undoubtedly the hard way that that's a bad idea. So if you're cool with it, I'd love to hear the rest of that story. You were talking about your brother and how he made good art. Yeah. Yeah, my brother. Hold on. All right. I. Sh yeah. Okay. So the story, I don't know where we left off, but my brother. Yeah, he makes good art, and uh, he. There was one time when I was twenty three, and my 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 dad, or sorry, my brother was not doing well he was you know not taking care of himself because my mother was not able to take care of him the way she used to because of her own illness and uh there was like my dad told me i i had i rented this is like when my stream first started doing well so i rented the house next door to my mom's house because i wanted to be close to her and i was with my friend ethan we lived at this place next door right and my dad called me and he's like hey i need you to do me a favor and i was like okay what is it and he just said, uh, I've called social services and they're picking up your brother and you need to go there and moderate it and make sure everything goes OK. And I'm just like, what? Why, why the hell am I doing that? You know, and he just put that all on me. And I remember the fucking cops came and they were just like. They were like. Uh, my. My, they were like, my brother is like not aggressive, but you know how NA cops are, man. They're just, they're, they're like, you know, guns blazing type shit. And it's just like, dude, like they were scaring the shit out of my brother, man. And 
I had to just sit there and calm him down. I'm like, hey, please, he's not aggressive. You know, he has autism. You're going to scare him. Like, I had to deal with all of this. And, like, I didn't have any support from my family. And I just sat there while my mom, who is struggling with her own health problems, has no idea what's going on because she's had multiple strokes and has had brain surgery and brain cancer. And she's just sitting there crying, doesn't know what the fuck's going on. And I had to, like, moderate all of this while my father just dipped, you know? And it's like... I, I don't know. And it, it just ate me inside, man. I saw that. And to this day, my brother is just rotting away somewhere with, like, a a bunch of, like, crazies, man. Like, there's just no way he's happy. And and this shit just weighs so heavy on my fucking soul, man. Like, I don't know what to do. And I feel like I, I have trouble talking about any of this shit. And it's like, I, I may... I don't know, man. It's It's just hard for me to even... Think about it like it sucks. I feel like all of the parts of my childhood that I've loved are just gone. And I don't know what to do. Okay. So, Mitch, we're going to help you with this. All right. So I don't think we need to talk more about your past, but that was a really powerful share. And I can sort of see so much. Can I start talking? Yeah. The first thing is, holy shit, no wonder you feel alone. I feel so alone, man. Like, I feel... And not only that, like, I've never shared this shit, you know? Like, this shit is, like, shit that I've been trying my best to just deal with on my own. And I just portrayed myself as, like, this put-together gamer or whatever. Like, that was my escape from all of this shit, you know? And, uh... Once you just really dig inside yourself and realize you can't escape, you can't, no matter how successful you become, no matter how far away you run, this shit will destroy you, man. And it fucks me up every fucking day. Okay, Mitch. Are you in a space to listen? I am, uh, yeah. So you are 100% right that no matter how far you run, you can't escape. And that's because... Yeah. You carry it inside you. You know, I if do, I have man. kryptonite, if I have kryptonite in my backpack and I go for a jog, I'm taking that shit with me, bro. Yeah. Right? And if I were yeah. to think about speaking of artistry and imagery, can you hear me okay? I can. Okay. I know you're hurting. I'm going to talk. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, obviously. A lot has become clear for me. And I, I think that. You can't escape from it, but you can absolutely deal with it. And, and that's becoming clear to me. So I, I know it sounds weird. Like, I know that you're feeling like shattered and shit. And I'm sorry if I, you know, because I did that sort of. I mean, it was there. But Mitch, I feel hopeful. I need to help my brother somehow, man. We'll get to your brother in a second. Okay, let's focus on you for a second. Can you do that for me, bro? Yeah. So if I were to, if I were to, if I were to make a picture, okay, maybe not. What are you feeling? <laughs> Sorry, Mitch. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. No, Go let's, tell me. What, what are you feeling? I don't. Man? I don't need to get all ugly right now. Just it's fine, man. I'm, like just tell. Uh, okay. I'm having trouble. I just need a deep breath. Okay, just give me. Yeah, give me like let's breathe. Thing. Like I said, it's like, I do, I have thought about these things before, and it's like, but alone, you know? Like, I, mm -hmm. I don't talk about this shit, and uh, it's just, uh, I just, yeah, I, I, I'm not, yeah. I had a plan, though, with all this shit, you know? Like, I really did. Like, I don't know. I had, yeah. a, I had a plan, man, and it's like, I'm just trying to do an ounce of good, bro. You know, like, I, I for my, for my fucking... I've just lost the fucking child, like, the person that I once was, you know? It's gone. Like, it's just been f fucking shattered, man. Like, oh, I just, I feel like the world has just dampened me, and uh, I have a lot to share. Yeah. Yeah, so I know it sounds weird, Mitch, but do you have a sense of why I could be hopeful? 
when you say things like that? No. Can you tell me why? <laughs> yeah, it's weird, right? Because the first thing is like, because you're not alone in this moment. Like you're saying that you don't share this stuff and you just did. Right? Because like the problem here is that you've been carrying this shit all by yourself. And like, that's like you're carrying it with you wherever you go and you're the only one who's carrying it. So like right now in this moment, what I what I saw you do is take off your backpack for a second and pass it to me. Right? And I can hold it for a few seconds before I pass it back, which is fine, man. Like, the only way this works is for you to, like, not be alone anymore. Right? And, and this, is the, this is the challenge, is, like, when I think about, I'm going to just keep talking, okay? Whatever you're feeling, you got to tell me if I should stop. Feeling like a dick for keeping talking, but I'm going to keep going. So here's what I'm here's what I'm seeing, Mitch. If you were to ask me, Alok, paint a portrait of loneliness. What I would have done before this conversation. You listening? Yeah. I'm going to keep going. Okay. You tell me when to stop. Do I need to stop? No, you're good. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Okay. Yeah. If you were to tell me to, to paint a portrait of loneliness, I would have painted a person by themselves in an empty room. And what I'm realizing now, what that painting involves is, is if I had taken a snapshot of you being on the phone, being 23 years old, walking into, into a room that has cops, your autistic brother, and your mom with cancer and strokes. That is the portrait of loneliness. In a nutshell. And so... Yeah. yeah. It feels overwhelming to share it. But I'm going to ask you a question, Mitch. Do you feel alone right now? No, no, I don't. I just feel very vulnerable. Yep. Because this is, this is it, right? Like, it's really hard to, like, bare your chest because you don't know if the knife is coming. Yeah. Mitch, bro, this is a part of your journey, and I know you feel vulnerable, and we're going to sit with you, Okay. Yeah. We're just going to sit. You don't need to do anything. You don't need to say anything. I can talk if you want to. I can listen if you want to. How how can I how can I heal through this? Like like even just opening this small little window has made me just feel uncontrollably sad. And I have that image in my mind. So, yeah. The image in my mind. And, um... I just remember how much my my brother and my mother loved me. You know, I was just like a, a, a year to a year or two ago. I just went. My brother had this. Like, I can't even fucking talk, man. He had this like chest full of like everything he had collected. And he had like a. He had these Game Boy files. It was like Game Boy Blue. And Game Boy Red. And one of the files was... 
he like named the file after me and he... I opened up the file and I just like logged into the game. He completed everything 100%. He just, he just misses me, you know? And I just feel like I was just running away because I can't face this shit, man. I can't face this shit. Okay, Mitch, I'm going to say something weird to you that you're probably going to push back against. I'll ask you a question. Is it okay, okay to not be able to face it? No, nah, it's not okay. Because there's no one else that will, you know? There's no one else that will. So if okay. I if I don't, I'm going to have to die with this pain? You are... I know this is going to sound fucking weird, Mitch, but I want you to listen, okay? I want you to use whatever ounce of energy you have to listen to my words. Can you do that right now? Probably not. Maybe not. Yeah, if you give me like one second, man. Yep. I, I can listen. Just give me one second, yeah? Yeah. You want to take a break for a bit? Go wash your face, something like that? Compose yourself? Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm keeping you up. I don't know... I don't know how this, you know, I don't know, man. Well, looks like we opened Pandora's box, so we're going to put it in order, okay? We're here, bro. There's no rush. God, man. It's like everything that I ran from. Like, you know, I ran from this. I met the streaming people that I met. And now I can't even talk to them, man. Like, this world is just so weird. And, like, I swear it's just, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, yeah, I'm going to take a second, okay? Yeah, take a second. All right. Oh. All right, so I guess if people are watching. <laughs> I forgot for a second that this is being streamed. All right, so let's take this opportunity, all of us, to take a second, okay? So feelings can be powerful. They can control us. Um, and that's okay. And that, you know, learning how to tolerate feelings, sit with feelings, letting them out, is absolutely like an important part of this process if we want to heal. All right. Uh, I've collected myself a bit. I apologize. What are you apologizing for? I don't know. I just need to keep myself put together, you know? I just apologize for... for I don't know. Just everything... I don't think you did anything wrong. I'm worried I did. Yep. I understand that you're worried, and I understand that your instinct is to apologize. And I think what happened is, I, let's be honest, I pushed you a little bit. I felt like there was something important there. And you, you have a Pandora's box. And well, I have I have a soul that bleeds so hard. Yep. And everyone just views me as this person that I created, and I hate that person. It's like I live like a double life, and I, I, I my life is fucking weird, man. Yeah. So, Mitch, like this is why I have hope for you because in this moment you are no longer living a double life. There is no longer the dude on the inside and the dude on the outside. And you ask, how can you heal from this? Well, you opened a window in this. Sh it smells like shit in there. And so the, the smell that comes out is so overwhelming. There's so much emotional pain. There's so much negativity. But the whole reason that it's in there is because you never open up the window. 
You've just made a huge step forward. And when it comes to your brother, you're right that if you are not there for him, you will die with this pain. Mitch, will, how old are uh, you? I'm turning 29 in two days. And how long are you going to be alive? I don't know. So if let's I say that... If I, if I carry this pain and this stress, I've learned enough about health that that shit will probably end up giving me some sort of illness that I don't want, so... Yep. So let's say yeah. that average average life expectancy in the U.S. is 72 or so. So you've got about 43 years left. If you have chronic illness, you knock off 10 off of that. So you've got yeah. 33 years left. So this is where I want... I know it's going to be hard because you feel guilty for abandoning your brother. Okay? But I think this is where, like, do you need to be there for them? I For him, I'm going to say, yeah. And if you say, because no one else will, I will say, yes, Mitch, you are correct. That is your dharma. That is your duty. And you don't need to do it right this second. Yeah. Right? You I honestly your... had a hard time. I had a hard time. Every time I would call him, I've call, I called him. I, I visited, actually, uh, like a, a couple of years ago. Uh on like Christmas and wherever they have him, they have him on a lot of drugs. I think that's just part of how the system works here where it's like, we deem you unfit for society. So we put you on drugs, but that's the last thing he needed. They have, they have, uh, just dampened my brother to a point where he's just complacent and there's no, he's not like I, he needs help. Okay, so uh, I, I understand that. I, I may have a slightly different perspective, but that's neither here nor there. But I think, like, in my mind, your road is pretty clear, and you're walking it, right? So this started with you streaming at the age of 20, becoming successful, developing an ego, getting involved in drama, starting to die on the inside. Yeah, running and away then, from the true pain, yeah. Yep, and then you started waking up, and you lost Byron, and that was hard for you, and it was hard for me, and it was hard for everyone. Uh, it was so hard for me, man. Yep. Dude, he was like the one... I talked to him about this shit. <laughs> he, knew, he knew all this shit. I talked to him. We had so many heart-to-hearts about shit. Yep. And Byron was someone that had been in this streaming world so long too that we were both so fucking over it man and I, oh man i just wish i could talk to him one more time man. well i mean i know it sounds kind of weird but mitch you can talk to him right like you may not be able to hear his words but you can still talk to him I do. I literally fucking Good. send. I fucking am crazy, bro. Like, I literally DM his Twitter every now and then. Like, he's there. I'm just like, yo, man. <laughs> I don't know. There's very few people that you meet in this world that will listen to you. And he listened to me, you know? So, Mitch, I know this is going to sound kind of weird. I think that that has been your experience so far. But what I'm seeing right now makes me hopeful that there are a lot of people in this world that if you give them the chance, they will listen. And maybe this is a consequence of streaming and shit because, like you said, you know, there's always an ulterior motive. So people who are like streaming, like this is a challenge that we see is like, you're in the business of friendship, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's, it, it's all like, half of it is like a sham in my eyes. Half of it yep. is just like, I want to be friends with X person because X person can do this for me. And like, it's so empty, dude. It is empty as fuck. And like, I don't understand why people want to be that why do you want to be like if why do you want to feel like me in the end nobody you know what i mean like 
So, Mitch, let that go as best as you can. Okay? Ugh. And recognize that when you make your music, you are taking one step closer to connecting. When you share this today and you open the Pandora's box and all the emotion comes rushing out and it feels overwhelming, you are taking one step closer to being like authentic and like letting that healing process begin. This is what healing looks like. You know, yeah. surgery ain't pretty. It's not like, wow, where you see these beautiful green pluses and a bar yeah. fills up. No, trust Sur me, I know. I, healing I've, is... Like I said, go ahead. I'm sorry for cutting you I was going to say, like, healing is more like blood magic. Like, yeah. in reality, right? Yeah. It's like you pay the price mm -hmm. to fuel that healing. Yeah, and, like, I paid the price. Like, I, 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 I've done some work to deal with this, but as soon as I go a little deep even like alone like this th this comes out in me and like this is where i was at when i was making music you know it was like this would come out and i would just be sitting there like writing and like just putting it into like words i guess and like to me that was sort of therapeutic but it doesn't fix the problem you know yeah so i think you've done a lot on your own but bro this is where like you're right like i don't know that it's the f I mean, I'm sure you can because you're still young. I mean, you've got you made a lot of good breakthroughs and you'll keep making breakthroughs. But this is where I'd say, bro, don't walk this journey alone. This is not a journey you need to walk alone. I understand yeah. why you feel alone. I understand that there have been people in your life who should have been very close to you. And like that has like, you know, your dad kind of dumped that shit on you. And then, you know, there have been people who have you haven't been able to connect to. But yeah. this is where you need to party up. This is not a single player game anymore. Making music, sure. I feel but like making music is more of a way, it's more of a deeper way of doing my job, if that makes sense, you know? Like, uh, I just feel like as a streamer, I couldn't, I, I had to just, I had to, you know, like nobody wants to watch this shit, you know what I mean? Like people want to watch a happy person playing a game. But like with music, like, People can relate, and there's a message and a story, and it's like it's 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 authentic, you know. And that's why I felt like, I yeah, yeah, Mitch, your music has the pain has purpose when it comes to your music, and so I can yeah. totally respect that. But you know, that's like that's one part of your journey that I think is awesome that you've been watching. But there's like this is the blind spot that I'm talking about. Like this shit needs to be dealt with directly. Right? Yeah. Like you need to share these stories and let them out of your soul. When you say your soul bleeds on the inside, yeah, that's because it's like stuck full of knives and like you're not pulling them out. Because when yeah. you pull that knife out, the blood starts spurting more. Yeah. And then when the blood spurts more, I'm in fear of how, you know, people will like, I don't want to be attacked when I'm opening myself up on the most vulnerable level because I have... I, I have been attacked before, you know, on a, on a wide scale. And, like, I know, like, that pain as well. You know, the pain of being widely hated by the internet. I, my, that was my reality for, like, two years. And it, like, it, it was, like, it was, it, it was mainly hurting my ego, which I learned to get away from that and not really give a shit about that side of things as much as more, which I'm glad I made that development as well. But, like, I'm in fear that if I pull the knives out on a scale where it's not just me alone in a room by myself that I'll just bleed out until I'm dead, you know? Yes. Like it's so, so, bro, listen, like very simply, right? You've got 32 years left. And so what I want you to I'm do very... I'm dying at 60? Yeah, if you, this, this shit keeps going, right? And I'd give yourself like two or three years. Like, honestly, I'd give yourself two or three years to put yourself in a, in a good headspace before you help your brother. But should you yeah. help him? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you the only one who can? Probably. Yeah. And so, like, I, I get that he's kind of medicated out and stuff like that. But that, too, I mean, they're, you know, I know it sounds kind of weird. You just got to trust me on this one. As a psychiatrist, sometimes there are people I see their fam I see family members who come and see like their chronically mentally ill family and they're devastated by what they see. But mm. honestly, like. There are some places that are pretty good where people are actually happy there. I know it sounds crazy. 
Yeah. I, I know it sounds absolutely crazy, but like there is happiness to be found in a mental hospital and way too many fe- people fall in love. That's a whole different problem. But anyway, I just when I visited there, it didn't seem like an environment where he could thrive to the fullest. That's all. So, so I, I can't comment on that facility. But, you know, I, I know it sounds shocking and it can be emotionally painful to accept. But like having worked in some of those facilities, I, I know if that I had family members who were like that, like I would actually be willing to send them there because I know that life on the outside can actually be harder. Right. Some anyway. This this I'm getting off in a yeah. You kind of come c- coming back good. to you. Uh, my my point to you is that you know I would to a certain degree trust what your mind is telling you, but also recognize that like you know if you're that for now this may not be quite as bad for your brother is emotionally you think it is because your mm-hmm. feelings of abandonment are going to amplify the situation that you see him in. Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Yeah. So I'm not saying you shouldn't get him out of there. I'm not saying you shouldn't do more for him. By all means, do both of those things. But cut yourself a little bit of slack. Right? Because you were thrust into this situation at the age of 23. And the responsibility for your brother, while it's unfortunate that all of it falls onto you, you can't be expected to bear it right away. Yeah. So be patient with yourself. It's not only that, my, my mother as well. My, it's not just my brother, it's my mother as well. So, uh, I will say this to you in the strongest possible way. So when you say it's hard to be vulnerable because you've been punished. So what you need more than anything else, Mitch, is a regular person. I would highly recommend therapy where you can go in on a weekly basis and share yeah. this shit, open one tiny window at a time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've never actually given therapy uh, 100% of a of a try. I have spoken to people, but it was just, it just didn't get anywhere. Yeah. So I think that you probably, the spiritual fortitude that you've developed over the last year will mm-hmm. hopefully help you handle therapy like a little bit better and get more out of it. Maybe you just weren't ready yet. But I think now that you've done all of this personal work, it's time to start cleaning out the cellar. Mm -hmm. And you're right that if you pull everything out of your soul all at once alone, there's going to be too much bleeding out that happens. I, that's exactly what happened to me when I went into this, I went into this alone and was trying to just deal with the pain through just like body, like manipulation, I guess, you know, and, um, it worked like I was bleeding, but holy shit, I was bleeding so hard that I didn't even want to continue, you know? And it's like, that was very, uh, like some of the moments that I hit in in those times when I truly opened up even alone were almost were too much you know and I can't even imagine if I was that person with you know telling to somebody else you know it just feels like you're even it's it's weird you know I I don't know I I had a couple eye-opening moments though when I was trying to deal with this on my own so Mitch you are I think an amazing example an amazing example of the benefits and shortcomings of spirituality when it comes to dealing with something incredibly traumatic. Because there's no doubt in my mind that you've come a very long way on your own. It's amazing. Like even that one story is like absolutely heartbreaking and soul shattering. There's man, there's so many more. Yep. So we're not going to go there. Okay. So now I'm going to set a limit if I can, because I think we don't, we want to like, we want to do this sort of like, you know, like yeah, one step at a time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So I think that's yeah. healthy. Anything more uh-huh. than that, I think would feel a little bit too much. Yeah. Right? So and we I to- appreciate you for real. I feel, I feel like after I've calmed down, I feel a little like a little, like I don't feel as heavy, I guess. I feel a little bit like better. I still feel like I have a lot to do and there's, you know, <laughs> but I do feel a bit better. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome, bro. You're right. You have a shit ton to do. But this is how we have, we have to teach you. You have to learn how to do it in a safe way, right? Like, you don't go yeah. jumping into the Pacific Ocean. It's like, let's step into the kiddie pool. Uh-huh. Let's try swimming four feet. Let's, yeah. you know. Kiddie pool sounds good. Yeah. And, and, and I think, bro, like, it's amazing. Like, you've done awesome stuff with diet. And it sounds like you're, you know, making music. And it's, like, very authentic. And I think it's really unfortunate. But, 
you know, the most beautiful art is created by the most painful life. And that's why as a society, we love art, right? Because it speaks to us on a level that like, you know, an artist that painted a painting 700 years ago can talk to you today. You can feel yeah. connected with them. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know, this is going to, this is going to sound kind of random. I'm going to say this to kind of lighten the mood. You know, that song in the air tonight by Phil Collins. I do. The one that was, it was in Tarzan, I think. No, I don't know what movies is that, but it's one of these songs where like, I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. Because the lyrics are so damn vague. He just says, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. That's all he says. Yeah. And I have no idea what he's talking about, but I understand him 100%. Hmm. Yeah, that's why music is special. I feel like even if you haven't gone to the depths of pain that the person is speaking of, there's a human consciousness that can sort of connect with it. Absolutely. So like you walk that spiritual journey, you create your music, have it be part of your growth, have it be part of your therapy. Yeah. And also work with someone else. Don't bear this shit alone. Right. But you, you see why the music helps me though. It's like, if I can't share this in a way through words, it's like, I'm, I'm looking for deep connections, right? So if, if, if I can deeply connect with somebody out there through music, then I've done that's what I'm looking for. Love, whatever you want to call it. You know, some sort of thing that isn't just on the surface. Like, I really strive to, for that. Can you tell me a little bit about your music? Yeah, what, what about it? Just tell me about it. Well, and what in specific? <laughs> what do you mean? So I understand what you're striving to do. What have you, like, what are you conveying through your music? my story you know or the my uh my my little album that's coming out on my birthday in three two days is like it's it, it just tells a story you know and uh so yeah i'm trying to just convey my story in in little windows like you said um and be able to relate on a level where i feel like i can connect with people because i felt like as a streamer i was having difficulty connecting with people Awesome, man. Yeah. Mitch, you've really come a long way, dude. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you saying that, for real. It means a lot to me. Thank you. I'm going to do my best not to get emotional, but I'm going to toss this last one out. I feel really, it, it's, it's heartbreaking to me that you've had to come so far on your own. And if I, if I, had, if I could change one, if I had a magic wand that could change one thing in your life, I wouldn't try to take away your journey um, because I think it's important and healthy to walk the journeys that we're, we walk, even if they're painful. The only thing that I wish is that you didn't have to walk it alone. Yeah. I appreciate you for saying that. Even after just talking to you, I don't feel as alone as I did. You know, I feel like you were able to listen to me and um, thank you for that. I, I, this was very scary for me and I still am worried, you know, but it's all good. I feel like uh, that's part of you know me just accepting things for what they are. Yeah, man. I, I think it makes sense to me that this felt good and it's scary because I think learning how to trust is going to be a slow process. The yeah, saddest it's thing it's very about, hard for me. Very, yep. very, very, very hard for me. The saddest thing about trust is that it can take a lifetime to build and a moment to shatter. Yeah, for sure. And that that's another thing with the yeah, you know, the the music is like uh I'll, I'll, I'll on Friday at like uh, it's scheduled for like 3 p.m. I'm doing like a live or like a performance or whatever and I'm like I'm really anxious that that you know. But I feel like that's going to help me just like be in that moment. Like the, those like flow state moments where you can really just be yourself. Like those are the kind of the moments that I, I like live for, you know. And uh I'm just looking forward to trying something different whether people shit on me or not i'm just gonna keep pushing my head face strong into the fucking brick wall until it collapses you know like i'm just i'm just gonna keep going man yeah man yeah mad respect i, I think here's what i'd say to you mitch like you kind of said whether people like it or don't like it it's not about what people like or don't like it's about what you have to offer 
Yeah. So if you're doing a live stream, some, you know, what I'd say to you is like, you may be worried, oh, what if I screw up or whatever? Like, it's not about screwing up or doing a good job. It's yeah. about giving us whatever you have to offer. Yeah. I'm just very nervous. I, you know, <laughs> I haven't streamed, I haven't streamed in six months and I'm doing something completely different. And it's just, it, it, it just, you know, it, it's just a little nerve wracking. That's all. Yeah, I can imagine, man. Yeah. I do not I do not envy you. Yeah, for sure. I don't think anyone does. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Sounds rough, bro, not gonna lie. But man, yeah. I can I can I can feel the weight of your scrotum growing from here. <laughs> yeah, let's hope uh <laughs> Yeah, let's hope it goes. It, it'll go well. I gotta think yeah. positively, you know. Yeah, I, I it's mean, like look, my message is real. My my feelings, my heart, my soul is in this shit, you know. So, and that's another terrifying thing, you know. When you when you when you share a piece of your soul, criticism hurts even more than if you're just creating a persona, right? Like when people would attack Mitch Jones, I didn't really give a shit, you know. To me, Mitch Jones was just a fucking nineteen year old version of myself that I just brought out every day. But when you when you when you really dig deep and share the deepest parts of your soul, and then people are like shitting on that, that is painful. But it's something that I've I'm used to, and I'm I'm equipped for, you know. So yeah. Awesome, man. So yep. do you want to give us a couple details about? So are you going to be streaming on Twitch or what? Like, where can we find you? Where where can we find your yeah. album? Yeah. Well, on Spotify. It's coming out on the twenty third, and then on the twenty uh, on the twenty third, like on my birthday, I'm doing like a birthday celebration, and like so at, at three p.m. on the my main Twitch channel, I'll just be doing like uh, I'll be doing like a show, you know? It's like I'm showing a a music video that Canstera made, you know, Canstera, right? Mm -hmm. He made like the Have you never heard like the, It's Your Boy Asmin Gold? It's Your Boy Asmin Gold? Never heard that. Okay, you're unplugged from the memes, but yeah, he makes all the Twitch like videos and I made the song and he made the video and it's a, it's a beautiful heartfelt video and uh, it's it, like the the song is called Time Machine and it kind of just talks about uh, a lot of the stuff that, you know, not, not as deep as we talked about it today, but it just talks about the things that have been like weighing heavy on my conscience, you know, and that's like the lead of the of the album and then the rest of it is just a story of like, you know, meeting a girl and then having good times and then back to anxiety and, you know, living with anxiety for, like, one of the songs is called No In Between, and the hook goes, like, my, you know, it's like, my anxiety gets the best of me. I'm up and down with no in between. Like, that's just, like, that's just me, you know? And yeah, it's just, dude. like, a whole, it's a whole story, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, yeah. yeah, so I'm going to be, I'm going to be, like, do, performing all these songs on, at 3 p.m. on my channel, and uh, I'm hoping that it goes well, yeah. Yeah, man. I'm. Yeah. I know there's been a lot of pain today, Mitch, but I'm. I'm. It makes me happy to see the person that you're becoming. Thank you. Thank you very much. And it's 3 p.m. CT, by the way, so Central Time. Cool. You should check it out. It would be cool to have you just be like, "Yo, like I, that'd mean a lot to me." Sure. I'll. I'll do my best. I. I think I may even. Uh, depending on when you start, we, we may. We may try to raid you, but. It, yeah, it's a, I will, I'm doing like a 24-hour countdown thingy, right? So it's like it starts at on the 22nd at 3 p.m. CT, and then the show will start when the 24-hour okay. timer, 24 timer ends on Friday at 3 p.m. CT. So if you're not busy then, it'd be dope to just be like, yo, what up, Dr. K, you know? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I'll do and my I best feel to like, make it. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I feel like you've done a lot of good for the community, you know? Um, yeah, I just... I don't know. Your support would mean a lot to me just because I feel like a lot of the things I'm singing about are just like my mental struggles. And yeah, it's like, I feel like you've helped me with my mental struggles. So yeah. Yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd love to hear it. I know that actually, um, my wife likes your music. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so, I, 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 you know, it was kind of weird. I, you know, I, I know we've communicated a little bit prior to the stream, but I, I actually haven't listened to it. I found emotionally, for some reason, it was hard for me, and I'm I'm beginning to think maybe that was karmic in some way. Um, oh, it is loaded emotionally, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I just I couldn't bring myself to to listen to it for some reason. Um, mm -hmm. But I think maybe that was the universe's way of telling me to you know wait 
until it was time. And it seems like it's time in a couple of days. Yeah, no, it would mean the world to me if you know you were there. So thank you. Sure. Okay. Well, I, I think we sort of stumbled on the end. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did. I mean, I, I, like my brain is spinning right now, man. I, I just, yeah. Yeah. Mitch, take care of yourself. Take it easy, okay? And, okay, and thank you. We'll, we'll try to catch you on Friday, bro. Hey, thank you very much. I appreciate the take combo. Care. Yeah. You too. Thank you, man. Bye. Later. All right, chat. Sometimes life ain't easy, huh? <laughs>